Hello guys, welcome to this new video. So now we are going to look at this question 8 from the November 18 paper 3, which is a rigid body mechanics question. So here we are told that a uniform rod of weight 36 newton and 5 meter is resting horizontally and we have the support here that is uh, preventing the, the rod from rotating about this uh, pivot that it's uh, uh, connected to. And we first need to calculate the force that the support exerts on the rod. So first of all, we should consider what forces are acting in this problem. So we know that the rod has a, has a weight of 36 newtons, and we also know that it's uniform. So that means that the mass is distributed equally. So we can assume that the weight force is the, at the middle of the rod in this situation. So this would be at 2.5 meters exactly in the middle and then we also have a force from the support since at this moment we have translational equilibrium meaning the rod is a moving up down left right so the sum of all the forces must be zero but here we don't really have any horizontal forces so those are already zero but the sum of the uh, vertical force must also be zero and well we therefore must have a force acting upwards that not only balances this situation but it prevents the rod from rotating because here there is rotational equilibrium so this force not only needs to prevent the rod from moving but it's in such a way that it counteracts the torque of this weight force it's exactly that amount so that the rod will not rotate so what we can say is that the torque let's say that this is like some reaction force, then the torque from these two forces must be the same around this pivot as they are acting in opposite directions. So they must cancel each other out as if they wouldn't cancel each other out, then the rod will start rotating in one way, but it is not uh, rotating at the moment. So we need to calculate the torque from both of these forces. And well, the formula for torque is force times distance. So the forces are obvious. We just need to look at the distances. So what we need to do is uh, extend this, extend the lines of the forces and draw a perpendicular line into the pivot point and then see what the length of that line is. So if we look at this weight force, this perpendicular line is two and a half meters. So the torque provided by this weight force is the force times this 2.5 meters. And then we do the same thing for this reaction force. So this is where the force is acting. And then we draw a, horizontal, a perpendicular line to the pivot. And we see that this length is 4 meters. So like the arm of this force is 4 meters. So R times 4. And well, one of them is trying to rotate the uh, rod clockwise, while the other one is trying to rotate it anti-clockwise. And usually we have that in a rotational equilibrium, the clockwise torques and the anti-clockwise torques are equal. That's how they cancel each other out. And so we can write all of the anti-clockwise torques on one side and all of the clockwise torques on the other side. And in such a way, they will balance each other out. We could also just write that 2.5 W minus 4 R equals zero. That just, that just takes into account the different direction, but yeah. So the uh, normal force or like this support force is going to be 36 times 2.5 divided by 4 which will be 22.5 newtons so that is the support force here and then we are told that the support is suddenly removed and it start to the rod rotates clockwise obviously as we will have no more support for stopping the rotation about this pivot point and the moment of inertia of the rod about the pivot point is 30.6 and we need to calculate the initial angular acceleration. Well, if we remove this uh, force from here, then we will have only one force providing the torque, which will be the weight force as this force over here will no longer be present. So we know that the torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the acceleration. And so the torque is only provided by the weight force. So we just have W times the arm, which is still 2.5 at the beginning. And then this is, will be equal to 30.6 alpha. And so the angular acceleration will give us 2.94 radians 
per second squared. And then, after the rod makes an angle theta of the horizontal, we need to outline why this Suvat equation cannot be used when this angle, I mean, the time it takes for this angle to become pi over 2. So, pi over 2 is just 90 degrees, so this is the situation we are talking about here. This is when we have 90 degrees. And why we cannot use this equation to, to calculate this time. And well, the reason is because these Suvat equations or well, these rotational Suvat equations, but I'll just write Suvat equations, they assume constant acceleration. Constant angular acceleration or linear acceleration for simple for the projectile motion equations. So we need constant acceleration. In projectile motion, we usually only have gravity as the acceleration, so 9.81, or in the horizontal direction, we usually have zero acceleration, which is also a constant. And well, here is the same thing. So we need a constant angular acceleration, which means that we need a constant torque providing this angular acceleration, as our moment of inertia is a constant. And if angular acceleration also has to be the constant, then the product will also be constant meaning this torque cannot change throughout the motion. So the torque must remain constant. But now, does the torque remain constant is the question throughout the motion. We know torque is defined as the force times the distance from the pivot. So like this perpendicular distance. But, well, I mean, the force stays the same as the weight of the rod clearly doesn't change while it uh, falls. But the distance kind of does change, as if we imagine, for example, let's just draw this uh, situation when, like, when, let's say it's at like 45 degrees, or about 45 degrees. So it's uh, dropping like this, and well, we still have the weight force in the middle, like this. This is still in a ratio of like 2 meters to 2 meters, so it's still in the middle, but if we draw this extending line for the force and we draw this perpendicular distance between them then we see that this distance has become smaller so it has changed it has changed from four meters and since the the, the arm of the force is always changing then it must like that means that the torque provided by the weight is also changing as the torque is just the force times this distance and well, we can also see that the distance is constantly decreasing as this is a right angle triangle over here. This over here is right angle. We know the hypotenuse is 2, as we know this length of the rod is 2, and so the, the two bases of the triangle must be smaller than 2. So it's constantly increase, decreasing. But if we just imagine the rod in this vertical position, we can also see that at this point, the distance becomes 0 as the weight force is still down the middle of the rod. But now the axis of the force passes through the axis, which means that it will produce zero torque. So if at the start, in this situation, it was producing maximum torque, and in this position, it was producing zero torque, then we must have had a transition between the two. And this transition was taking place from a maximum to a minimum while it was falling. So that also just shows us that the torque does not remain constant as the distance the arm of the force is constantly changing as the arm of the force constantly decreases as so and now so when when it becomes vertical we need to show that the angular speed is 2.43 and so it's important to remember what we just deduced. So we just said that we cannot use these Suvat equations as the acceleration isn't constant. So it's not advised to start using like some equation like this, like the final speed squared is equal to the initial speed squared plus two times a times delta s or delta theta, as we cannot use these as the acceleration isn't constant as we have just discussed. So we need to come up with another strategy to do this. And well, the strategy is energy conservation. So we know that at the start, it was stationary. So at the initial position, if we label this situation one, and when it's vertical situation two, then at situation one, we only have potential energy. 
So the rod is at some height and then it will fall some height. So it will lose some potential energy, but this will be converted into rotational energy. So in this second point, we have rotational kinetic energy. And these two must be equal as um, we have a frictionless pivot and we also assume no air resistance. So energy must be conserved here. So at the start, we have, uh, well, gravitational potential energy. And we need to see how much distance the, the rod fell. So, well, we can see, like, for example, the middle, middle of the rod, if we consider the middle, as that's where the weight, that's where the force is being acted upon. So we usually consider the center of mass here of these objects. So if we consider the distance fallen by the center of mass of this rod, well, it will, it, let's just, just assume that at this height, it was at height equals zero. And we know that the center of the rod is at 2.5 meters away from the pivot, meaning when it reaches the vertical position, this height will be 2.5 meters. So it has fallen two and a half meters, the center of mass of the rod. And this is how much, let's say, potential energy we lost. So if we say instead that this is the maximum height of 2.5 meters, or I mean, it, it doesn't, let's just assume that this is 2.5 meters and this is height equals zero, then we can see that at the start it had a potential energy corresponding to two and a half meters. And then when it has fallen, it will have zero potential energy it is, as it is at height equals zero. And so we'll only have rotational kinetic energy. So we can write up this energy conservation. So we know potential energy is just mgh. We know mg is just w as we know the weight. And then we need to multiply by the height it's at which is going to be 2.5 meters. And this will be equal to one half times the moment of inertia times the angular speed squared, as that is the rotational kinetic energy of the rod. So we can now rearrange for omega. So what we'll find, we can multiply over with the two, take the square root and divide by the moment of inertia. So we'll have this over 30.6, and this will give us 2.4425, approximately 2.43 radians per second. And then we need to calculate the angular momentum of the rod. So here we just need to apply the formula, and the angular momentum is the moment of inertia times the angular speed. Now we know the angular speed when it's um, when the rod is vertical. So we need to calculate the angular momentum when it's vertical. When it's vertical, the speed is 2.43. Its moment of inertia is unchanged. So we are just left with this, which will give us 74.4 joules. So this was the end of this question. I hope I was able to help and see you in the next one.